just hold off, not prescribe this time. No, well, that's pretty consistent there. Let's try, what did you try, how much? I'm even thinking six, because the right eye, a little better. I work specifically with patients with albinism. My clinical training is in low vision rehabilitation. And so my role or my goal is to be able to help enable patients with albinism to be able to use the vision they have, understand more about their own particular vision, and then enhance that vision to really maximize their world, their environment, their function with special tools and devices, whether that's with glasses, magnifiers, sunglasses. Um, but the education is the piece also that is um, really important to me, both educating the individual patient and educating health professionals around the patient about that particular condition and how it might be in helped, enhanced, and aided. Martin's bag, Mark, should you slip your camera bag on the My work has developed over time. I would say when I first started coming, I was just learning so much about the conditions, about the society, um, and also specifically about vision. Um, in my clinic back home, people with albinism have a certain characteristic, you know, set of things that have to go with albinism around vision, uh, whether it's glare and light sensitivity, whether it's eye turn, strabismus, or whether it's these other visual complications, and all of that lead to low vision or visual impairment. But when I came to Tanzania, I was really learning about um, the whole context of the situation. What not only their vision, of course, but their family environment or lack of family. So maybe they were without any support living in an orphanage, a child in an orphanage. Or My hopes for the East Africa region for albinism, for people with albinism, are, are on a couple different levels. One is on the individual level where a student is able to learn in school and thrive and, and ultimately become a contributing member of society, um, really included within that and equal to others. The other is that the society as a whole would learn to appreciate who someone with albinism is. Of course, every individual is, is who they are, but not to judge them just because of the way they look or have assumptions about them that are based on false beliefs and myths. It, it's, it's, it's okay to understand that somebody with albinism has visual impairment and may need assistance or, or a special help, or that they may have more, you know, um, susceptibility to skin cancer and to help with that. But it's not okay to consider somebody lesser than human or to consider them an object to be killed or murdered or traded and so on, of course. And so my hope is really that that stigma, that that changes rapidly, not just in 20 years time, but in a few years time. And, and I already see some, some positive movements of that happening, absolutely. Every time I come, I see there's something that encourages me in that direction. And for me to be part of that, it, it's, it's, it's an amazing journey. It's, uh, it's a privilege, really, to be part of that service um, to an individual and to a group, a mankind, you know, a larger society. Okay.